Sometimes the most unsettling mysteries aren't buried in ancient myths or conspiracy theories. They're sitting quietly inside peer-reviewed journals. We tend to think of science as a fortress of certainty. Equations describe the universe, instruments measure it, experiments confirm it. And yet, the closer we look, especially at the quantum, biological, and cognitive frontiers, the more reality itself begins to slip through our fingers. Today, most of us live under the umbrella of materialism, the belief that everything arises from physical matter, particles, forces, and the brain's firing neurons. It's a worldview that has shaped medicine, technology, and modern life. But what happens when science itself begins to reveal cracks in that framework? This isn't about pseudoscience or speculative theories. These are five rigorously studied, scientifically verified phenomena, documented by physicists, neuroscientists, and institutions at the cutting edge of research. Each one forces us to confront a strange truth, that our current models of time, space, perception, and even consciousness might be incomplete or profoundly wrong. Some of these findings suggest that the act of observing can shape physical outcomes. Others show that belief alone can trigger measurable changes in brain chemistry. Still others hint that space and time, the very fabric of our reality, are not as solid as we assume. And perhaps most provocative of all, we'll examine cases where consciousness appears to persist beyond the brain's activity altogether. This isn't just about physics or neuroscience, it's about the edges of what we think reality is. About peeling back the surface of the known to glimpse something deeper, something participatory, interconnected, and possibly conscious in its own right. So if you've ever sensed there's more to life than what textbooks or talk shows tell you, you're not alone. The evidence is already here, and it's more mysterious than we've been led to believe. Welcome to Beyond Reality, where we explore the scientific edge of the unknown, if you're drawn to deep questions and credible mysteries, consider subscribing. Let's begin with an experiment so strange, even Einstein called it spooky. It starts with a single particle and a choice to observe. A beam of electrons is fired toward a metal plate with two slits. On the other side, a detection screen waits to record where each particle lands. With both slits open and no measurement in place, the electrons form an interference pattern, a wave-like design suggesting each particle travels through both slits simultaneously. But when detectors are added to observe which slit the electron passes through, the pattern disappears. The electron behaves like a particle, not a wave. Observation alone changes the outcome. This isn't a fluke, it's the double-slit experiment, one of the most replicated results in physics. Whether using photons, electrons, or entire molecules, the conclusion remains. The act of measurement collapses a range of possibilities into a single event. The implications run deep. In classical physics, observation reveals what's already there. In quantum mechanics, it may help determine what's real. The Copenhagen interpretation, long dominant, holds that reality exists in superposition until it's measured. Competing views like many worlds suggest all outcomes occur in parallel, but only one becomes visible to us. In 1998, researchers at the Wiseman Institute took this further. By adjusting the degree of observation, they showed that the more precisely a particle is measured, the more the interference pattern fades. Reality, at this scale, becomes harder to define the closer you look. This isn't abstract theory. It's the foundation for quantum computing, tunneling, and modern electronics. And yet, it carries a philosophical weight. The smallest building blocks of matter don't act as fixed things until interacted with. The observer matters, not symbolically, but functionally. No one agrees on what exactly causes the shift. Is it consciousness, measurement, a deeper process still unknown? There's no consensus, only data showing that the universe responds differently depending on whether it's being watched. It raises a possibility that rattles the foundations of materialism, that mind and matter might be entangled in ways we don't yet understand. Placebos were meant to be neutral, a control mechanism to separate real drug effects from psychological noise. But the data kept pointing to something else. Sugar pills, saline injections, even sham surgeries have triggered measurable improvements in conditions like chronic pain, depression, and Parkinson's disease. This isn't anecdotal. Brain scans show that when a person expects relief, their brain releases natural opioids. 
In pain studies, fMRI reveals the activation of the same neural pathways as those stimulated by morphine, without any active drug involved. In one experiment, Parkinson's patients who received a placebo showed increased dopamine production, leading to noticeable improvements in motor control. The treatment was fake. The response was real. This is more than the power of positive thinking. It's consciousness interacting with biology. Belief triggers biochemistry. Expectation influences perception. And the body responds as if preparing to meet the mind halfway. The implications go beyond medicine. Materialist science has long treated consciousness as a passive byproduct of the brain, a shadow cast by neurons. But if belief can reshape brain function and body chemistry, that dynamic isn't one way, it's a loop. The placebo effect isn't weak, it can rival actual medication in effectiveness, particularly in conditions tied to perception and regulation, pain, anxiety, even immune response. And it scales with context, a confident doctor, a white coat, a familiar setting, all of it amplifies the effect. The brain responds not to substances, but to meaning. None of this replaces treatment. But it challenges the idea that only physical matter drives healing. The placebo reveals that the mind isn't a passive observer. It participates. If physics showed us that observation shapes particles, placebo research shows that belief shapes biology. The observer effect applied inward. And just as belief bends biology, time itself turns out to be more flexible than we've been taught. Every day, satellites orbiting Earth send signals to your phone. Without correction, GPS would drift by kilometers daily. The reason? Time moves faster for those satellites than it does for you. This isn't malfunction, it's relativity in action. According to Einstein's theory, time passes at different rates depending on gravity and motion. Clocks in orbit tick slightly faster than clocks on the ground. The effect is small, but measurable, and it has to be corrected constantly to keep our technology accurate. More dramatic is the twin paradox. One twin travels through space at near light speed while the other stays on Earth. When the traveler returns, they've aged less. Experiments with atomic clocks on planes confirm it. Time isn't fixed, it bends. We tend to think of time as a neutral backdrop ticking forward the same for everyone. Relativity shows otherwise. Time is affected by where you are and how fast you're moving. Two events can be simultaneous in one frame and separated in another. Duration itself becomes relative. This changes more than physics equations. It challenges the structure of experience. If time can speed up or slow down depending on context, then what we perceive as now isn't universal. It depends on perspective, even sequence, the order of events can shift with velocity and gravity. Some physicists propose that time isn't flowing at all. Instead, past, present, and future may coexist in a larger structure where consciousness moves through a fixed geometry. That model remains debated, but the data is clear. Time isn't absolute. Physics explains how time behaves, but not what causes its passage or why we experience it as linear. Some link time's arrow to entropy, others to unknown quantum processes. But none of these fully explain the subjective experience of time or why it moves the way it does. Our clocks still tick, our schedules still follow one moment after another. But beneath that everyday rhythm lies something stranger, a system where duration, simultaneity, and flow depend on motion and mass. And if time can shift so dramatically under the right conditions, perhaps space isn't the only thing it bends. Perhaps separation itself is more illusion than law. In the early 1980s, physicist Alain Aspect conducted a landmark experiment in France. Two particles were entangled, prepared in such a way that measuring one would instantly determine the state of the other, no matter how far apart they were. The measurements were taken rapidly, and far enough apart to prevent any communication between them, even at light speed. Still, the particles behaved as one. This confirmed predictions made by physicist John Bell decades earlier. Bell had shown that quantum mechanics allows for correlations between particles that classical physics simply can't explain. Aspect's team proved those correlations are real. Later, Anton Zeilinger's group expanded the tests, linking entangled particles across city-wide distances. Each time, the results held. These aren't faint signals or anomalies. 
the correlations violate what's called Bell's inequalities, mathematical limits on how much two distant particles should be able to coordinate, assuming they operate independently. Entangled particles exceed those limits. This doesn't mean information travels faster than light. It means the usual idea of distance breaks down. Entangled particles don't communicate. They act as parts of a single, unified system, even when separated by miles. The implications are serious. Locality, the principle that objects are only influenced by their surroundings, no longer holds at the quantum level. Neither does the idea that particles have definite properties independent of measurement. Some theorists suggest entanglement reveals a deeper layer of reality, one where space and time aren't fundamental, but emergent from more basic relationships. In this view, particles are not separate things, but expressions of shared states. This phenomenon isn't speculative. It earned Aspect, Zeelinger, and John Klosser the Nobel Prize in 2022. It's being used in quantum encryption, data teleportation, and ultra-secure communication networks. Still, the core mystery remains. Entanglement defies separation. It connects across distance without signal, disrupts cause and effect, and refuses to fit into any familiar model of how the universe should behave. It's one thing to read about this in textbooks. It's another to realize these connections aren't confined to the quantum world. Some suggest the principle might extend to us, not metaphorically, but fundamentally, because in rare moments, people separated from their bodies have reported awareness not bound by time or space. And in some cases, those reports defy explanation. In 1991, Pam Reynolds underwent a surgical procedure that required her heart to be stopped and her brain activity brought to zero. During this state, no heartbeat, no respiration, flat EEG, she later described vivid perceptions, the tools used, conversations among surgeons, and specific details that were later confirmed. Cases like this are documented in peer-reviewed studies. One of the largest, the AWARE study, led by Dr. Sam Parnia, investigated cardiac arrest survivors across multiple hospitals. Some patients reported awareness during periods when brain function should have been absent. A few even described verifiable details from their surroundings, details they should not have been able to perceive. Neuroscience struggles to account for these reports. After just 10 to 20 seconds without oxygen, measurable brain activity disappears. Standard models suggest that consciousness should vanish almost immediately. And yet, some of the clearest, most structured experiences occur when the brain is effectively offline. These experiences are consistent, a sense of detachment, clarity, a panoramic review of life, and often a sense of presence or encounter. They're not dreamlike or confused. They're often described as more real than waking life. Explanations involving low oxygen, neurotransmitter surges, or dreamlike hallucination cover some ground, but fall short of explaining the veridical elements, especially when accurate details are recalled during flatline conditions. These cases don't prove that consciousness survives death but they raise critical questions about where consciousness begins and whether it depends entirely on brain function. For decades, science has mapped brain activity linked to emotions, memory, and perception. But none of that explains why we experience anything at all. The neural patterns are real. The subjective feeling that goes with them remains unexplained. Near-death accounts highlight this gap. If awareness can persist without detectable brain activity, then the model of consciousness as a product of neurons starts to break down. Some researchers propose that consciousness may be a fundamental aspect of the universe, like space, time, or mass. Not produced by matter, but present alongside it, we don't need to make metaphysical claims to recognize what the data is pointing toward. Consciousness may be deeper, more complex, and less confined than we once believed. And when viewed alongside particles responding to observation, biology reacting to belief, and space-time bending under perspective, these accounts become more than anomalies. They become part of a larger, ongoing mystery. Across every field touched in this journey, from physics to medicine to neuroscience, a pattern emerges, not in theory, but in evidence. Real experiments conducted under rigorous conditions keep pointing towards something that conventional models can't fully contain. Particles that shift behavior when observed, brains that respond to belief with biochemical change, time that bends depending on where you are, connections that persist across distance with no physical link, and conscious awareness that sometimes continues when the brain is clinically still. 
None of these findings offer tidy explanations. They don't hand us answers. They challenge us to let go of the idea that reality is settled, singular, and purely material. They invite a new kind of thinking, one that honors precision, but also makes room for uncertainty. Science isn't failing, it's evolving. And as it moves forward, the line between observer and observed grows thinner. The world begins to look less like a passive stage and more like something participatory, alive with feedback, context, and relationship. You don't have to adopt any belief system to see the significance of this. These results are not speculative. They've been published, replicated, and debated by some of the most respected researchers in the world. What they suggest is not an end to science, but the beginning of a broader inquiry. If that kind of exploration speaks to you, you're in the right place. This channel exists for those who value both evidence and wonder. To continue that journey, that consider subscribing and keep questioning not just what reality is, but how much of it we're truly seeing.